Uh, just to go over what I'm going to talk about, you've got uh, two main types of uh, grinding methods, and that's going to be your spiral grinding and your longitudinal grinding, which I'll go into in a minute. Um, but I'm also going to hit on uh, the machines that you can utilize uh, to accomplish these grinding methods and then go over some operational and safety parameters of those machines. And then we'll get into wheel performance a little bit um, and some of the parameters that you should consider when uh, selecting a wheel for your machine. So for those of you who don't know, um, metal conditioning is just removing the scale and the cracks and the defects and uh, any impurities on the surface of the metal um, I've heard a lot of presentations today about what happens downstream, um, but not as many people uh, seem to be aware of what the ingot looks like upstream. So you can see up here uh, what that ingot looks like as it comes out of the mold and then what it looks like after it has been ground. So uh, one of the grinding methods is longitudinal grinding, and that's just going to be your surface grinding. Uh, the workpiece is going to move underneath the grinding wheel uh, linearly and uh, like he mentioned, uh, spot grinding is often used with longitudinal grinding and uh, spot grinding is, uh, a technique used with spot grinding is feathering and that's going to be with the grinding wheel you're going to come in and gradually increase the pressure as you come into the crack and gradually decrease the pressure as you come away from the crack. Um, Longitudinal grinding can be done on round pieces, but it's really not the most effective method. It, it creates what we call a scallop effect, and it removes more material than you really need to remove. So if you have rounds, you generally want to go into spiral grinding, which uh, you're going to have the workpiece uh, rotating on some rotational equipment there. And it also moves linearly underneath the grinding head, but it moves at a much slower rate and gives you a, a spiral finish that you can see right here. So this is some of the equipment that has been used in the past, uh, plate grinders, traveling grinders, stationary grinders, uh, and then just some of our material handling equipment. But today, we're mostly focusing on uh, traveling and stationary grinders. So traveling grinders are basically mobile grinding machines. Uh, it's a grinding machine on a base that travels up and down on rails and moves along the workpiece. So these are some of the machines from, we call them the 20th century machines. Some of them are over 50 years old. And you can see that they're designed a lot smaller and less robust because um, back then, not as many people had capabilities to uh, make these larger, wider slabs that you can today. So it's uh, created a need for some larger machines that you can see here and then also uh, in the stationary grinding machines. Uh, you can see our overhead stationary grinder is much more robust and it allows you to uh, grind a wider variety of uh, shapes and sizes of material and it's also more rigid. Uh, when grinding titanium, these machines really take a beating because uh, titanium is a really hard material. So you need to have something that's going to withstand uh, that kind of abuse. And then the one down here is what we call an end grinder, and that just grinds basically the ends of the ingots. So some of the parameters of the machines that we've seen. Um, they're all going to have between 150 to 300 horsepower. Uh, there have been applications where we've needed to go higher than that. Uh, they pretty much all use 24-inch uh, diameter by 3 to 4-inch wide wheels. Um, you can see they're designed to accommodate a variety of sizes. That's a pretty wide plate there. And then down here, we're able to flip it on its side so that you can get uh, the surface as well as the edges. Uh, the most improved feature of the old machines to the new machines is definitely uh, the controls. You can see a couple pictures of the old machines. Basically, the old controls used to be just an operator console with several push buttons that you're constantly having to uh, maintain anytime you wanted to change any of the parameters of the grinder. And you can see that the grinders used to be open cab, which uh, is a very loud environment. Uh, I think this one 
isn't even as old as it looks. Some of the really old ones, you basically had nothing more than just a metal tractor seat that you were sitting on uh, for eight hours a day. But you can adjust all of the uh, operational parameters through the touchscreen, HMI, as well as uh, it, it's all, it all runs on PLC. And uh, so you set your operator uh, parameters and then you sit in an ergonomic chair and you just run two joysticks to run the machine. So it's a, it's a lot better, a lot different uh, than the old machines. And also, you can, uh, one of the parameters that you can set and, and know exactly how much uh, downforce you're grinding with. So you can uh, reduce the amount of material removed as you make uh, additional passes. You need to remove you know, a lot of material during that first pass to get that scale off. But once you get past that, you can bump that down so that you're not removing as much material. So again, uh, going into the operator's cab, it's, it's fully enclosed. It's got insulated walls to keep it quiet in there. It's air conditioned so that when you're in there for eight hours, uh, you're, you're doing just fine. And then we also provide uh, dust collection. Uh, we call them swarf booths, and that's going to catch all of your heavy particulate. And uh, it's, it generally connects to existing dust collection systems. So that's where all your fumes and your smoke is going to go to the existing bag house. And going into wheel performance parameters a little bit, uh, with titanium, you can generally expect uh, around two to three pounds per hour uh, per horsepower of material removed. Uh, and then you can see how that kind of stacks up to stainless steel and carbon steel. Um, and there's uh, a bit of an inverse relationship uh, between horsepower and grit size. The, the higher you go in horsepower, the smaller grit you can have. And then to elaborate that uh, a little bit more, you can see that your grit size, you have a larger grit, uh, you're going to get a little more life out of the wheel, but your material removal rate and your finish are uh, going to be uh, less positive. You have a lower material removal rate and a coarser finish. And uh, the higher you go in your grit size, <coughs> uh, you're going to get less life out of your wheel because it's breaking down faster, uh, but you're going to get a higher material removal rate and a better, finer finish. So these are just some wheel safety parameters that you should always follow. You never want to overspeed the wheels. Whenever, you, uh, whenever you're mounting the wheel, it always needs to be on a flat surface just so you don't uh, risk damaging the wheel unnecessarily. Uh, potentially causing any kind of uh, wheel breakage. So basically just to summarize, uh, the new machines are completely different machines than the old machines. Uh, the, the digital controls allow you a greater level of control over the, the, over the entire grinding process that you've ever had before. Um, the machines are much more enjoyable from an operator's perspective. Um, and then just being in the age that we're in, that uh, information is so readily accessible, it's much easier to track and uh, improve on the grinding wheel that you need for your particular application.